She's always here for the family when they need it. And this is her darling grandchild by the name of? Jaden. And Jaden tells me she used to be shy, but isn't it wonderful that she's not now? Give her a big old hand. <laughs> yeah, she's, <laughs> she's hiding not. under me. I know. Okay, so say hi. Th I have to thank you all for coming to Colorado. I uh, was born and raised here, and uh, it's home to me. And I come pretty regularly to watch the grandchildren while their parents are racing. They're uh, planning for the Baja 1000 at this time. So I'm here for about uh, six weeks. Uh, we could use some prayers for the Baja Peninsula. They've had two hurricanes this past season. And uh, they're trying to rebuild the roads and access ways to the smaller villages down in the Baja. That's part of the trade uh, for being allowed to race in that country. So uh, prayers for easy movement of river valleys, boulders, and sand, please. I guess that's it. We're waiting. Okay. She, my granddaughter would like to address the races are crazy. <laughs> my mom and dad always win first place in the races, so I'm always glad about that. <laughs> yes, she just recently uh, raced in the uh, breast cancer races from Lancaster to Las Vegas and took first place in her division for breast cancer. So this will be the uh, next race in the in the group. So thank you and uh, prayers for all the people that uh, are associated with that kind of activity. It's pretty dangerous. And I used to think my son's crazy for doing that skeet shooting internationally. <sighs> but he'd probably be doing that if he had the equipment. Anyway, isn't it wonderful how nervy our young people are? That's just amazing. Aren't you? I love you, Koala. Don't you all love you, Koala? Say, I love you, you Koala. And, there. and for anybody out there that hasn't seen who you, Koala, is, you didn't tune in early enough. So make sure all you out there on TV land... I call it that, but I think it's computer land, right? Oh, well. Anybody that's on Red Willow TV dash live, slash live is watching us free for the first time we've been able to do that. And we really want you to call all your friends and neighbors that you think might be interested and tell them to watch too. The wisdom and the energy gets imparted electronically very well in this Aquarian age. in those outfits. I wish you guys could see the regalia that some of these beautiful people and these precious women are all wearing. It's ceremonial. It's not just show off. It means something. It's very powerful. And ceremony and tradition are what holds societies together and worlds together. So I think they're absolutely, and I could let Yukala talk on that for about two hours, I'm sure, the importance of traditions and ceremonies. And we're having ceremony here all over the place. Some people say, oh, they're having a sweat lodge. We can't go because we're not going to give me a break. I don't know if we're having a sweat lodge now, but you're part of all that is, and we are all part of all that is, so join us. Uh, there she is, our rushing woman to come up and speak, and it's time now. Eleven, eleven, which is tomorrow, at 11 in the morning is the sweat lodge. Don't wear a lot of jewelry. Wear cotton clothing if you can and enjoy yourselves. It's a wonderful experience, much as I fought it for years myself. <laughs> anyway, um, right now, as I said earlier, we are having some wonderful speakers who are taking the place of Mazitson, who was delayed somewhere along the path from west to east. And he and an elk greeted each other in a hard way. Now, so it, hopefully they're both all right. But some of us need lessons on slowing down, huh? Gee, not like none of my family. You know, I, when I was growing, when I was raising my kids, that I'm still sort of doing with grandkids now, I, I thought it was important to use every possible minute as efficiently as possible. I didn't realize I was setting an example for three type A children. And, and I call some of them A plus because they won't slow down for a minute. <laughs> 
That means you, Ryan, if you're listening. Um, we have to over-accomplish. But this is the life, of, life experience classroom, so I guess some of us believe in shoving a lot more in there. Are we ready with that thing back there? Okay, because I'm waiting for you to give me the signal on it. Okay, it is time. Barbara Wolf and Margaret Anderson, each in their own right, incredible gifted women and speakers and the knowledge and the books they've written. Speaking of which, there's lots of books, including from Joe Plum and many other people, including our symbol book, that are available for you to take home. So Margaret, I'm going to let you and Barbara come on up here. Give them a big hand. Honoring the elk. Is this on? Is it on? Is this on? Get right on it. Okay. Let me make sure it's on. Yes, it's on. Okay, we're honoring the elk. 
Can you all hear Can us? Can you hear me? Can we jam that mic up just a tiny bit? I'm right on it. Ooh. Now you are. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're honoring the elk. One of them especially. He did a giveaway. That's why the man isn't here right now to talk. That's why we're talking. Those two came together. So we're honoring him. Yeah. Yeah. And we're not quite ready, but we're, we were just told five minutes ago we're going to talk. We're supposed to talk tomorrow. So hold on one second. And Isn't it fun, the technicalities of modern-day dimensions? Okay, this is my great privilege to introduce this woman. I told a few of you that were in here a while ago that Barbara and uh, Margaret have this network where they are connected with Japan and other places around the world. And my goodness, you know how many prayers Japan needs. But Japan prays for everybody else, just like these elders who have to choose between heating their lodges and feeding their families quite often on our reservations. But that's another subject. The point is, they are peace givers, peace prayers, and peace establishers all over the world. And they've written several books. They're trying to finish another book, but they're so busy they haven't had time to finish it. <laughs> and so you understand how that is. Tell the time to stretch a little for you. They just yeah. told me that. Good. So it, this is a good thing, and they're going to do a wonderful presentation for you here now on the spur of the moment. So stand and give them a big hand, please. Those of you who can't stand. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's fine. Thank you. Thank you. This is a book that we're trying to get finished. We promised the publisher, oh, by the end of August, uh-huh. Mm, September, well, October for sure. Well, here's November. Well, you know, uh-huh. And this is what the book cover is going to look like. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? Look at that. That's Eagle. Look. Oh, my God. I mean, we're so excited about this. <laughs> if we ever get it finished, though, it'll be done before, you know. It will. It will get done. All right, here's, um, here's one, the one before that. Oh, yes. You remember when it said December 21st, we're all going to die. The world's coming to an end on 20. Uh, we said baloney, and we're going to show you it's not true. So we traveled around the world doing that. And we got two, book, two books, that, and here's one of them made out of Japan, and we, oh, we went absolutely everywhere. But the funny thing was that the wind was blowing like crazy. So this man said, here, I want to take your photograph. Okay, so I took my cap off like this, and he takes it, and here's the picture. But the hair was going up like this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, this computer guy, he said, do you know how to cut my hair? Yes. <laughs> so that's the, that was Japan. And here's another one that we did in, uh, at the Hague in the Netherlands. Can you see it? Can you see it? The lady kneeling, she's one of the most powerful women in the world. She's Japanese. Oh, man. Yeah, and then Margaret's on one side and I'm on the other side. Again, they don't give you any chance to do it, fix yourself up. You know, here you are, you know. So this one guy and me, we're doing like this, you know. Oh, well, and never mind. <laughs> and here's another picture. This is a musical rapture. This is, you can get this free off the Internet by Cat Petty Kodoroblis' uh, website. And what happened was that her son was about 42, and he suddenly died for no reason, just pow, like that. And then a couple months later, she's hearing from this French composer in France saying, I'm in touch with your son, and we are composing music. Yeah. And so this is it now, what is so interesting. And you can get it free, you know. Was 15 minutes into that, it's about an hour long, 15 minutes you suddenly hear the angels singing. You can really hear it. It's powerful. And then it goes on for, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or something like that. But what's so important is they are not in the third dimension. They're not in this dimension. They're in a higher one. When their energies reach the third, which I would be doing it to my brain, it's called zero point. Now, if I had been interested in the Middle Ages in making lead, uh, gold out of lead, I would realize zero point will do it. Because at that point, it's, with what's in your thought, I want this, it's going to be. So I wasn't thinking of gold and lead now. No, no, no. We'd have, if something was really bad, like, well, we had 
28 earthquakes happening in uh, Puerto Rico, right? We said, this is totally ridiculous. We're stopping that. So we played the music, and this is it, guys. The next morning, we looked at on, on the computers, none. So you can see what you can do. So while she's doing her vortexes, I'm doing this. And, uh, and important is I'm standing with her. I will explain about that. And I encircle myself. That's how you get your, your energy contained. That's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. Okay, Margaret, your turn. Okay. <laughs> I think if I switch over to that okay. side yeah. and not fall off the podium. No. <laughs> That's right. Be careful of that. And we'll start this first. Okay, you can use this one. Yeah, okay. Okay. Today, Barbara and I will speak about our work with the vortexes. And the book, the Vortex book, booklet, was given to us in 2011, right after the Cahokia meeting. And, uh, by whom? By, uh, he it was given by the Higher Worlds to Chief Golden Light Eagle, and Silver Star passed us the book. And we have now traveled the world to help Mother Earth, working with the vortexes. So we've gone to the Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. The whales called us. They called me. What? You know, because Margaret is the channeler. Drop it a hat. Wow. You know, so we went because they said, you know, we're in trouble here. And go, go. You know, the, the water's being poisoned uh, with radiation, uh, plastics, garbage, all this stuff. That's where they live. They said, would you do that to your, where your land? Well, we do it, but, you know. So, okay. There's that. The, uh, the next place that we've been recently is Uganda, the Great Rift. Yeah, in, in Africa. We were told by the higher worlds, okay, make that a little not quite so vulnerable. We thought, oh, how are we going to do this? This is awful. I mean, what are, we, what are you going to do? I mean, I used to live in Africa, so I know all about this rift stuff, but just, what? So finally, I realized when a woman puts on stockings, what she's doing, she's putting in her two legs stockings. Well, this Africa continent's got only one leg. Really, you can conceive of it that way. So put a stocking around it and pull it tight, and that will hold that rift. So we've done that. So then what happens three quarters of a year later? Bam, terrible earthquake Major. there. Oh. So we haven't been told what to do about that. But anyway, yeah. We, um, Bemini. The destruction of Atlantis, 12, 20. Yes, that one of the major, major, major places that for the destruction of Atlantis was Bimini. And uh, so we went there on, the, that was 21st of December 2012. Yeah, oh man. That was the first time we did the drawing of the, the vortexes uh -huh. at the ocean edge. So we'll talk to you more about that. Anchorage, Alaska. Oh, the higher world said go. They didn't tell us why. Well, you're going to go. I mean, if they tell you, you got to go. We get <laughs> help. Where's the, anyway, <laughs> we got our feet off on the put on the ground just from the airplane. We thought, my God, there's going to be an earthquake now, and it's going to be a big one. Well, it didn't happen. But it was interesting that we had to have a, a driver take us to various places. So here was this man in his, his taxi. And so uh, we, we said to him, uh, will you take, yes, yes. I, and he looked all right. But we, we, we wanted to play with him a little bit. We said, now look, we'll, we'll tell you where we want to go in the morning and how much it's going to cost. OK. Then after that comes the lunchtime. Now here's where you have to agree or it's finished. You're not going to be with us. We are going to take you to lunch to your favorite seafood place. Oh, he said, okay. So we had the most wonderful time. He was cutting all of these, uh, these crab-like things. You know, with all, they were that long. And, and, so, and so anyway, but he, he too said, you know, I felt that earthquake coming. He said, I felt it. So anyway, and also they had terrible weather. When we were there, it was shirt sleeve weather. Not for us, but for everybody else and sunshine. So then we had to go rushing back to uh, New York City to be part of the, uh, the equinox or something. And we called him from, he said, please come back. He said, our, our, we're freezing. And it's snowing, help. Well, we haven't been there since then. Okay. <laughs> I, I, 
Uh, next place is Japan, Fukushima, and the Nature Kingdom of Issei. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was awful. You know, if you go to Japan, you can get one of these tourist tickets for, the, for taking the, the, the train as much as you want for one week or something. We zoomed past. We stopped at Fukushima. We didn't get out. It was terrible. Uh, afterwards, there, be, there are all these rice fields that the people have to what they're going to eat. You know, they were abandoned. Um, you saw no, nothing. Nobody was there. It's just all and the, the trees had green leaves, but they look white. I, I mean, that's the mind doing it. They were dead. There were no nature spirits. From the no, the nature spirits were not there. How can a tree live without nature spirits? I don't know. Anyway, so then we went down to southern Japan to uh, Ise. Ise. And that's where they all pray for the, the, the nature deal. And we met this wonderful priest. He just loved us. He kept giving us all this stuff. He doesn't speak any English. We don't speak any <laughs> But never mind. And there was a 700-year-old tree that had kind of toppled over but was still growing. And he showed us, like, 700 years, he said. And then Margaret's doing the vortexes, and suddenly this turtle shows up way up, and he puts his head like it, and then he comes out a little more. And all the way to her, all the way to her, like that. I mean. Now, it was as long as, as far as the end of the room. Yeah, and at first. And we were in a group. Go up way too close. And we were up in, the, in a group, and I couldn't get down to the water, so I was standing by the rail, and I telepathically read the vortexes and said, you know, this is the universal law of light, sound, and vibration, and I went all the way through uh, to the universal law, the vortex of healing. And as I spoke each set, each pair, each vortex, the little turtle popped his head up yeah, his and then kept coming forward. And then he'd stop and listen for the next one. And then I'd say the next one, and he'd come up and he'd come forward. And to finally, when the last one was read, the little turtle was at our feet. Yeah. Oh. So nature totally responds. Yeah. 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 What's next? Okay, the next one is the Rome Airport. Oh my the God. mud geyser. Yeah, we we were in uh Holland, yeah, for this big ceremony. Wherever that thing is. And um this lady out of the blue who spoke English, she said, uh, there has been a geyser, a volcano at the Rome Airport. I said, What? Because the Rome Airport is the largest airport in Europe. What's it doing with that going on? So we went. We went. and but then 50 it, yards from the runway. Yeah. yeah. And then, so she, Margaret, of course, she channels everybody. And so she's channeling the, the geyser. And he says, well, you know, some people don't like me. But after all, you know, I am. Oh. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The next one is Mediterranean, Mediterranean calling. Yeah, the sea was calling. It was crying. It's, it's you, you know, it's filthy with all kinds of everything in it. It's not good. Plus, North Africa was angry with each other. You know, that's been going on forever. So we had to go down and, and be in a, uh, we went to Crete, an island there, and uh, we did all right. And then to southern France. Yeah, where, we, again, we went to the Mediterranean with these, with the, uh, with the vortex. vortex that you're going to see. That you okay. can have now, too. Uh, Switzerland, the deep project. Oh, the deep D, capital D, capital E, capital E, capital P project. This has to do with dolphins, and they are uh, they're making ley lines between this place and Siberia and uh, New York and whatever. It, 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 oh, it's amazing. And so we were told we have to be part of that too. We didn't quite understand how, but yeah, we the were. vortexes are now part of that. Okay. Or Bri Brazil, Rio, the split of the continents. Oh, yeah, we went to Rio, sat on the beach, and you knew that if you could see with your visual, uh, these eyes, but go with the mind, you can see where the split is between Africa and South America. They used to be one continent. So that's a weakness, and it and it's runs up to uh, Iceland. Of course, we had to go there. We knew there were 30 potential volcanoes up there, and there's one that's spouting all the time. It won't stop. And all the way down to Antarctica, so we had to put the vortexes down on the beach of Rio to try to keep things calm. Yeah. Okay, and the Niagara Escarpment. The Niagara Escarpment is about, oh, I'd say 2,000 miles long, and 
it's we were underwater. The eastern part of of uh, the, of this continent, all the way to well beyond the Midwest, it was all underwater. It was it was the sea. So when the little shells things died, they fall to the bottom, and then another one, another. After about 150 what million years, a lot of years, it's huge. It's huge, and it remains because that's the way it will do. It will. Now the thing, the reason we're telling you this is that it was made during the time before Mother Earth was experimenting with the negativity. Now we are a little bit off with whatever her name is here from our tourists, but never mind. Yeah. So anyway, all these things lived and died in peace, in love, in positive energy, and still are because not, nothing loses its consciousness. Everything remains. So uh, we have this monster thing, and we were asked to put that over Japan and this and that. And again, you use your mind. You don't have to go out and collect 2,000 miles of that. You see what I mean? So yes, we did that because it's so positive and powerful. Now we'll speak about how to use the vortexes. Uh -huh. We've, before we came, we thought, well, gee, what are we going to talk about? We've got three books. <laughs> and, and, but then I said, well, we thought, no, we need to say how we, can, how we use them. And so we're going to demonstrate them. Yeah. Now, one way of doing it is using the single sheet of the whole vortex system. And um, you can put this on the wall uh, in an office. You can put it them um, uh, in your bedroom if you're saying prayers for family. Or oh wow, look there, <laughs> da or <laughs> <laughs> or show them in our, your lecture. <laughs> Wonderful surprise! <laughs> ah, we're doing a, oh, a dog and pony show, and we've got <laughs> wow. we've got <laughs> we've got the vortexes. Or fall off the podium. Oh, yes. There you go. <laughs> All right. So, so now. okay. So y you can put them in your bedroom for, um, or any room in the house that that are um, that are for your prayers and your ceremony. Another thing is you can put them on your body. And uh, I had in the spring a um, TGA or a slight stroke, and I became fearful of driving. And so when I um, started to drive, I thought, you know, I'm going to make this lanyard that you can get your badge and, and on this uh, ribbon have it to wear. And I just wore it under my sweaters, and I started driving again. So that's what the, the uh, vortexes can do. And where, we're coming, where they're coming from, as far as we know, my energy field is eight worlds. Eight worlds. United with each other on, on concepts. Yeah. Oh, that's right. And then. Um, yes, thank you. <laughs> she's telling me, what about the mic? Okay. All right. So, now, so she sees them as. How do you see them? Okay. Ener their energy fields. I, anyway. Yes, energy. I see. I like going through each set. I mean, each universal law, each spiritual law. I'll say the universal law of this combines with the spiritual law of that, and it creates the vortex of, of uh, universal law of light, sound, and vibration. Spiritual that, law yeah. of intuition creates the vortex of light, sound, and vibration. And I speak it, and I go through and analyze the situation going through all 22 symbols. And you'll notice um, that they that they give you a lens. I use them as a crystal lens to look over a situation, let's say in the Middle East, how do we deal with this? And I will look through each lens of each symbol, and then I'll look through the vortexes. Barbara takes the whole energy field and uses them. So it's interesting, everybody, you all have been given this gift. You can go upstairs and buy the books, uh, the vortex booklets. You can order them from StarKnowledge.net uh, or L, star, Go and buy them. And then if your heart calls you, I want to use these, um, then uh, I wanted to use them in my home, in my region. 
I want to use them for my family, my community, my nation, my earth, my solar system, going on and on and on. The, it's, it's yours to use. And so 2011, we receive these. 2014, you receive these. And now go and work with them. You can put them on your windows. Yeah, you can also, when we carry these, uh, the big single ones, We'll put them on the uh, windowsill of the hotel. So we go to Tokyo, we spread the vortex energy through all of Tokyo. If we go to Toronto, we've spread the energy system for all the Niagara escarpment. From one windowsill. From one windowsill. It is absolutely powerful. And then you can put them on the issues. You can take a, a map of earthquakes and then put the vortex symbols on them and say, I want these earthquake symbols these earthquakes to slow down, to mediate, to moderate, and it helps. Can you do that with ISIS? Yeah. You can do that with? ISIS, the war, the war zone? Oh, with that, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, with any, any war, any area of conflict. And interesting, uh, the key is in conflict to tell them to focus first on innocence, truth, and family. And we are here today in this wonderful moon of innocence, truth, and family, and have the negotiators have that in the entrance as they walk in. And you think about the families, and you think about the spiritual protection of the families. And, uh, and, the, and that would open the door to peace if everybody shifted from the desire of power to the protection and the innocence, truth and family, and protection of the family. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Number one. Okay. Now we're going to tell you how we how we work with the um, the the vortexes. Okay. My PowerPoint has already started. <laughs> okay. So the very first one, well, when we go to the beach, I'm going to talk about the oceans um, because we draw, the, we draw the symbols on the ocean. Um, I drew the symbols on the grass yesterday here, of course, to the sun and to the earth and all the mountains. I mean, you just had to do that. And the ocean, um, you, can, you can draw them on the trees. You can draw them on, in the flowers, on stones. The stones will hold it. So the first one is the university universal law of light, sound, and vibration. And this I considered when I start drawing at the ocean or here, this is the original symbol of creation. The, now these are my interpretations, Barbara's interpretation. She has her own. But this is how I see it, so maybe you'll develop your own. And it takes the spiritual law of intuition to feel the full vastness. This kind of knowledge isn't given through books. It's given from within and from the higher worlds. So you combine the universal law of light, sound, and vibration with the spiritual law of intuition, and you create the vortex of light, sound, and vibration. The next set. Oh, yes, and of course, when you, I'm so excited. <laughs> when you draw the symbols, because I draw them you know, with either a stick or a, a knife, and you know, I've even, the first time we drew them, it was in, oh, it was in Beth, uh, Bemini, and so I had my little plastic knife, and I was drawing them in, you know, th three feet this way, and then I'd be encircling them, and I said, how can I draw the symbols of the laws when I am not Silver Star, and she draws them to perfection? And they said, Margaret, you do not need to worry. It is the intent that counts. So uh, that was very reassuring because Silver Star's drawings for this uh, uh, booklet is wonderful. And Sherwin's magnificent artwork, uh, like the, what you see here, is uh, when, I, I, and when we enlarged them to go onto the 8 by 10 page, they, all of a sudden, you saw the universes in them. And the, and the printer had to print it right away, or started printing even before we started. So the next one is the universe, universal law of free will mm -hmm. combined with the spiritual freedom of man. Mm -hmm. Oh, by God. 
uh, creates the vortex of integrity. And we are, we're, we are a free world planet. And uh, the key is for all men and women to be spiritually free. And then we create the vortex of integrity, which is the basis of peace. The next one is the universal law of symmetry. Equality. The universal, oh, this is so nice. The next one is the universal law of symmetry. As above, so below. Um, as the thought is made, then it comes into reality. Uh, heaven on earth, you know, the ideal becomes real. So be always aware of your, your um, consciousness. And then the next uh, universal law of symmetry is combined with the spiritual law of equality and it forms the vortex of symmetry. The spiritual law of equality, there's a basic balance in nature. There is uh, equal, when you look at a, a palm branch, when you look at the branch of a fern, there is perfect balance on each side in the arrangement. As the left brain, right brain, male, female, all of this is a, a beautiful balance. And that's harmony. Now, the oceans, the whale symbols, are the, uh, oh, that's the medicine wheel. When the two combine, which is the perfect, you know, this is heaven on earth. This is all in balance, all directions, north, south, east, west, all races, all everything, all dimensions. The next one is the universal law of movement and balance. Oh, what did I do? Spiritual oh, that second one. Uh, this is the our spiritual law of movement and balance. You've got it. Yeah. And there it is. And that, this is the whale symbol. So when we went to um, Coney Island on the beach, um, and this was after the terrific, terrible hurricane of Sandy in November. We were there in March, and the ocean was flat. It was discouraged. And I started coming up, and I said, these are your symbols. I'm doing the symbols for the healing of the ocean. The ocean was, was not listening. So I was wearing my, my winter boots, and I went in, my, in the water with my boots, and I drove. I drew, drew, I drew, <laughs> I drew the symbol uh, of movement and balance and encircled it. And I said, "This is for you. This is for the oceans. This is from the whales." And then the ocean whooshed and got and started <laughs> coming in. And I had to run out before I got <laughs> stopped. Stopping wet. Oh my gosh. So the and so you have to have. Balance, you have to have movement in your body, you have to have movement, and you have to be balanced. You have to be balanced to have movement so you don't fall down. So, and in, when you're in perfect balance and perfect movement, you have spiritual strength, health, and happiness. So it is a perfect combination of, of realities. Movement and balance and strength, health, and happiness. There's so many secrets in these vortexes that you will find out layers and layers of secrets. Now tell her, tell her about when we were in Hawaii, the whales Oh, you, you tell. Okay. This is okay. <laughs> I have to Barbara gets help, to talk. Help, help. Okay. <laughs> she likes is it working? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I have to talk then. All right. So we were in uh, Hawaii, and Margaret was putting down the vortexes and all that at the beach, and I was playing the music with the angel kingdom so that they, I, so that they would be helping too. And then we finished, and then we uh, called Silver Star in the cell. Hi, Silver Star. What? The whales started breaching like you couldn't believe. Way out. Boom, boom, boom. Five of them. So, so we have. Uh, That's the number of change. Yeah, I, there it is. Yeah. The number of change, she said. And, yeah. And so, Silver Star was right there. And she recorded sang. The event. Yeah, and she, then she sang to the whale. That, look at the energy. <laughs> That, that's a whale. <laughs> that's, there's a whale. Help. And the elk. <laughs> oh, elk, you're here. Oh, thank God. 
Okay. Okay, the next one. The next one is the universal law of innocence, truth, and family. And look at how gorgeous this is. You know who did this drawing and these things? Blue Star. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really, thank you so much. Chief Blue Star did these things, all of them. Wow. So, the, so this is our month, the universal, oh, yeah. malfunction. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, you're next. This is a human function. Okay, the universal law of innocence, truth, and family. There it is. You see, at every entrance, at the entrance to your own heart, put that symbol on that. Um, and that combines with the spiritual protection of the family, and that creates the vortex of right relationship. And so as I am drawing these symbols in front of the ocean, I speak the two symbols and then the vortex, and then I turn and draw them. And so that is the vortex of right relationship. When I was thinking about, say, goodness, we're talking about all of this, how am I going to think about talking to you all about this? And they said, um, well, it's just like talking to the ocean. You know, it's all the waves of thoughts that are going to come in. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> so we are all part of the ocean of life. This is the first time we've talked about This is our first time. <laughs> this is a hard <laughs> uh, This is thanks to Silver Star, who had us talk at her workshop. And we said, oh my, unexpected. She never tells us anything. It was a Cherokee <laughs> sneak up. <laughs> <laughs> Mike before Margaret, OK. The, the, the next one is the universal law of change. That's the butterfly symbol. And uh, we were in, in Greece, and we were very worried about the um, financial collapse there. And um, mm -hmm. so we went up to Le Cavritos, which is a hill, a mountain uh, in Athens itself. It's in, uh, uh, in a little chapel called St. George Chapel. And we, at noon, did the drawings on the, you know, with, on our um, laps. laps. And then we prayed to, you know, that this, w the, all of this will come true for the stability of the country. And, and so we came out, and there were two butterflies, white ones, spinning in a vortex outside the door. And they wouldn't go, and they away. Wouldn't go away. They stayed no. with us because they totally agreed. You know, it was just fantastic. So when you're doing your vortexes now, wherever you do, see who's here. The elk are here. See who crow, the crows here, is an eagle here, is a butterfly here. Be aware because the nature spirits will come right in with you. Then to combine that with the spiritual growth of man to make perfect change, you have the vortex of growth. So this is a very powerful symbol when you're working for peace, that you pray for spiritual growth and you pray for change for the positive. The next symbol is the universal law of judgment. Uh, this is a oh, nice symbol not to use against others, but to judge your own self and your own actions. Um, it's not uh, say, well, look at what this country has done, or look at what that, na you know, that community has done. No, it's what am I doing? And so, and then what? It's, it combines with the spiritual law of karma. What is, are my, is my actions, my judgment? Uh, what is the karma of my actions? How beautifully, look at the lens that they say, you look at this and then look at that, change it, think about it. It's really uh, beautiful. And when we were in, in uh, Japan, um, the water snake came in Isa and went across the water before we drew the uh, symbol. And the diamondback, or the, and I, the water say, I thought was the guardian of that symbol. So universal law of judgment combined with the spiritual law of karma creates the vortex of true judgment. W what we're doing is we're seeing our lives and the life of the planet through these amazing lenses. Then the next one is the universal law of perception. Now this is very abstract. Now we've gone to the abstract. And the spiritual law of future sight. 
And um, when when we were we went to the Moss Landing in in uh, California, and a seal came out was waiting for us to come and draw these symbols. And then when I was walking along up and I draw them up and down the beach either one way or the other. And when I w came drawing the symbol of the universal law of future sight, what was there but the very symbol in the seagrass? There was a seagrass laying on the sand at the very spot that I was going to draw it and encircle it. And so I encircled it. And I said, <laughs> This, and I could just hear the higher worlds in hysterics as we we're, my God, look at that. You know, it's, it's, it's absolutely amazing. This is what happens when you really get into this. Yeah. You, so then I want to tell yeah, okay. I went Fort, to okay. So anyway, they were down the road, not down the road, the, on the beach between the water and the sand. There were like, um, oh, I'd say 100 seagulls yeah. sitting. I looked at them, I said, Come on, guys. Come on over here. Look what we're doing. So one of them flew over, looked, mm -hmm, and he went back. And another one goes back. And I said, no, all of you, if you don't mind. So then they would come up. They weren't swimming. They were just sort of walking. I said, no, this is no good. Come on. Come, come, come. They all came, all of them. And by the time she put down all of these things, they were there pecking at the sand at the water because they wanted the energy. They wanted the energy. Yeah. And so. it, it, it's, it's all miraculous. It's all miraculous. The next one is the universal law of life. This is yeah. thanks to our, our high tech mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, these, this is a very interesting symbol. It's an easy symbol to draw as the vortex because the really complex ones, you have to be a great artist, but you can do it. The universal law of life um, combines with the spiritual law of choice. Uh, the choices that you make influence your life, and, the, and the, your life is influenced by these choices. So what people choose uh, to be aware of the future generations, which has been always known in the Native American tradition, because the choices of today affect the life of the generations to come. And so always, this is a very, very sacred symbol and very powerful double-headed arrow. And, and powerful when you draw it, powerful when you think it. The universal law of life and the spiritual law of choice. And this is a powerful symbol to put down with water. And it's vortex of connection to life. And so the... Um, and also land, and it's it's an amazing symbol. And then we have, now we're coming to the two final ones, the universal law of na nature mm -hmm. combined with the spiritual law of protection creates the vortex of true nature. So this is like the growing crescendo of the whole presentation of the vortexes. Now here are these most powerful symbols for Mother Earth, for nature. And now we are thinking of protecting Mother Earth. And, and so one is universal all, and one is we're gonna protect her. So the universal is the all, the spiritual is right on the point. We're gonna make sure it's protected. And it creates the vortex of true nature. The last one, and, and I always see it's a chorus, is the universal law of love. Um, the universal law of love combines with the spiritual law of healing, creates the vortex of love. Sometimes the ocean will take all the symbols but leave just these two for humanity. So it's very interesting um, to, to do, and that is the, the, the 22, the 1111, that creates the 11 vortexes. And uh, it's, a, it's a, jo a joy uh, to work with. Yeah, now let me just find my talk. <laughs> my talk up. Okay, five minutes, okay. The, the other thing you could do is create 
to I go swimming, you know, and, and draw them in the water. And we did, I did that in the Mediterranean. Um, to use an incense stick and draw them and circle them. It's, 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 it's um, very exciting. And note what animals are there who come. Um, note the children came in Rio to, to draw. You know, the butterflies came in Arkansas and in uh, San, the, San Tome, the birds, the eagles will come, the crows will come, you know, the, the hummingbirds, you know. Do you all have any questions? What's the last book you're writing? Oh, 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 yeah. oh it's, listen to this title, listen to this title. You got two more after that. No, but write, which is our next book? Oh. Okay, 2014 <coughs> World Journals. <laughs> You know, we have to grow into that one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there it is. There, he, here it is. This yeah. is the one that we're working on. This picture was taken in uh, Nashville. Yes. Yeah. My little camera. Unexpectedly, we didn't know anything. And uh, here it came out. At, it was taken with her cell phone, which yeah. is was taken with her cell phone, which is, you know, like a two-bit cell phone. So uh, so it came out a little bit fuzzy. We tried to make it better. And then we have this this wonderful uh, computer man who can fix our stuff when everything goes wrong. And he says, well, what, uh, where did, what, did, what, you, camera did, you what camera did you use? Oh, we used a cell phone. Cell phone? <laughs> no! <laughs> never, never, blah, blah, never do that. What are you going to do? I mean, he knows everything. We don't know anything, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> start get start working.